Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, welcome once again to the Sin Shop live stream. I am, of course, the Mighty Pong, and with me tonight is, of course, Thomas Tusano. And tonight, we're doing something different. We're doing that. We're going to dial in for Maker. I, I, I'm bored. I didn't feel like making up questions tonight, so here's what we're going to do. You, you are going to ask the questions, my friend. Welcome, our very first inaugural guest of Dial M for Maker. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Tusano. Hi, hello. <laughs> hello there. So, okay, so it, we had a, we have a question already from a, a Thomas Tusano. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, yeah, that was the test from the other night, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, but you said, uh, you asked, what's your favorite wood to work with and why? Oh, so, my, so but yeah. yeah, go ahead. So I have I have two for this question. Okay. Um, well, actually, no, I have multiple favorite woods for different reasons. Um, first one and favorite wood for, like, my favorite all-rounder is leopard wood. That's a very dense uh, African wood, and when you cut it or saw it a specific way, it looks as if it has spots. Oh, or in, yeah, in the dog mite shop, we term it as scales. Um, and so we'll finish it with like a green or a red, and it will look like a dragon. Um, and then the other one for like for luxury, as far as it goes, I don't like rosewood because it feels too indulgent. I like a wood called chichen, which is also known as black poison wood. Um, and it has a lot of in-between tones, a lot of uh, whites and creams and reds and oranges oh. along, with, along with the browns. It's really beautiful. Uh, and it has like a folklore story to how it was created. And its sap is highly poisonous. So that's why I call it black poison wood. Uh, and Makes sense. What, yeah, my favorite domestic is maple because maple is probably the easiest and most pliable to stain. So you can, it's like more or less you can do anything with it as far as color goes so so what is it that gives these the these the different woods their look that's something i've that i've always wondered like you know how in the world did, how, i guess basically what i'm asking is how does a leopard wood get its spots <laughs> no it's a good question um it's mostly environment it's it's a lot of environment and how the trees like cellular structure is mm. um and a lot of this is this makes woodworking really really twisted when you okay. break it down like this because it's how the tree grows and how we use its carcass because its cellular structure is what makes its grain patterns. Okay. So think of it think of it like oh wood is like a bunch of straws. Okay. That grow that's that's how you think about it. So when it grows in warm environments or climates where it doesn't have to expend as much energy, it grows larger and therefore your growth rings are wider. Makes and sense. then when it grows in colder environments and it's using a lot of energy, it grows in smaller tight patterns. So the wave you get to the grain is the growth rings getting larger and smaller, depending on how the weather was that in, in that wow. annual growth ring. Yeah. It's, it's really, so you can actually cut open a tree and get a whole meteorology report for like a century. It, it's crazy. Hmm. Um, and then different grain patternings, things like quilt, flame, uh, tiger stripes, um, and even something called burl are all either various elements uh, that the tree had, either sicknesses. Burl is tree cancer, and there's these large tumors that grow on the tree, and then you can like slice it open and get some really crazy figuring. Um, and then uh, the, what was I about to say, figuring like quilt, flame, and fiddleback, is like violins, what you see on very upscale violins and guitars, uh -huh. uh, is actually a section of the tree called the crotch, and that's where it's supposed to part. Huh. And like where the forks of it are, where branches are. Um, and you see that a lot on maple because of how prolific their branches grow. Why do they uh, make like violins? Why, why do they make violins out of that wood? Why, like why the part where it branches off? Why that part specifically? Um, no, it doesn't always necessarily specifically end up being the the crotch of the tree but it ends up being like the figuring of it. And the more figured, it's this thing where like, it's, um, oh, it's almost like an animal hide. You mm -hmm. want that figure. So for the tops, for the front or the top of soundboard and the back of your violin, you'll use maple to give it that, that figuring. Um, some people use spruce violin tops. 
um, but you'll you'll take that cut of the tree to use to add kind of an air of luxury to the violin. So then the figure is uh, is basically the the shape, the color, the pattern of the wood. Is that am I am I understanding that right? So it's the cellular. Um, oh, it's how the cells and the, the grain interlocks. Mm -hmm. kind of thing and then it creates because the differing densities in that interlocking bunch of straws it then gives you this very weird wavy pattern now if i can just get rid of the 14 different people that are listed here okay i think i think we're good i think we've got this all right here we go we're going to go to that and go okay all right cool so we have like four selections of maple over here all right we have your plain grain we have your curly and then lastly we have one called bird's eye it's kind of cut off on the far if we can scoot over a little bit i don't know if we can can we bob oh you, little... man this guy demanding oh, demanding patinkin over here all right hold on sorry that's all right uh either way so we have we have a couple different figures of plain maple and then you have curly and you have bird's eye all right. Now, bird's eye is, is, I think, almost microburl or smaller interjections of imperfections in the wood, and it looks like little eyes in the wood, like little dots. Yeah. You can actually see it up close. Then over one, you see curly figuring, which is you can see kind of those holographic undulations in the grain. Mm. And that's from the grain interlocking. Like, literally, when you run a planar blade over that, you will get tear out because what will happen is the planer will try to remove the layer of it. And so when you're thicknessing wood, and it will actually tear the other interlock grains with it as mm. it cuts through the wood. So that's, you know, that's why it's called tear out is because it, that's exactly the action. It tears it out, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It tears out that interlock grain. It's like trying to get tangles out of your hair. Mm. So, so think of wood as just really kind of like basically a, a column of hair or straws. That's exactly what it is. Mm. Um, so that interlocked or that tangled grain then creates a, a undulating kind of figure because you have different densities of wood okay. all just in the same board. So it's, it's weird. It's, it's really odd. Um, and you can get curly figure in walnut and maple and nearly um, nearly any wood. I don't know if there's any that don't do it, um, but there are some figures that are unique to maple. Uh, and I, th I think bird's eye is one of them. Hmm. I don't know if there's bird's eye anything else. I haven't I haven't seen it if it does exist. I'll put it that way. So if those first two are both plain, why does why do they look so different? Um, so they are different sections of the tree or okay. they are either that one is a closer picture of the first. I, I don't think so. Let me look. No. I, so that is, so that is two different sections of the tree and two different kind of, um, examples of hmm. how, how it can grow. So you see that there's this streak off here. Um, right under like the column of the H right and that's called an ambrosia streak and what happens it's the reason it's called ambrosia is the tree will actually suck up minerals in the soil with its nutrients and use that to grow and when it uses those nutrients to grow it actually takes up some of the color of the mineral and normally it's a green a silver or brown color hmm. and so you end up with with these ambrosia streaks and this tone right here between like under the H and the A is all am like ambrosia nutrients. And you can kind of see greens in here. Yeah. Circling, circling my mouse. mouse. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's all nutrients, nutrients the tree has sucked, sucked up. up. Wow. And, and the, the, other the other really cool, cool thing, thing is you can, can play, play with ambrosia, ambrosia a lot in that, that when you stain, stain it, you can, can incorporate it into the stain because it might take this, it actually will take the stain differently. So if you plan out your your carving or your features on whatever you're making very carefully, mm -hmm. you can incorporate that ambrosia as a natural feature into what you're making. Uh, I've seen it on Valhalla screens where I've gotten very lucky where an ambrosia streak did something like went right by the dragon's claws or something like that. And so like I stained it to make it look like bloody swipes or... or whatever else like a feature oh, like wow. i've worked it into the design yeah so yeah it's, it's completely possible to use things like that 
to your advantage figuring as well um I, I especially like it when a curly figure ends up on something like a wing or a mountain or tree or yeah. some sort of subject where i can kind of stain it to make it actually bring whatever is being stained to life so oh, that's really cool uh for anybody yeah. just joining us uh we are doing a this is basically a question show like you can almost think of this as yeah. like a as like a radio call-in show but instead of calling in i got this here link for you right there uh, if you drop your questions in there, then uh, and and we can uh, we can answer them in the due course of time. We're just basically using that to keep track of questions. I, I know you have a couple areas of expertise, Pong. Is there any questions, any topics that you want to field this evening? It's it's funny because like my knowledge is almost intentionally a mile wide and an inch deep. Like I know enough about cars to where like if an alternator went out, I could replace one pretty easily. If a uh, water pump went out, no problem. Radiator, I got you. Motor rebuild? Mm. Mm. I'm not the guy. So, you know, stuff like that. Uh, that's that's kind of where I'm at. I'm 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 a mile wide and an inch deep. So uh so Chechen. Tell, tell me tell me about the Chechens. What are what are Chechen? What, what's right, what's the right. Chechen? So I have I have a really funny story about Chechen or Black Poisonwood. Chechen. Is that I got to go to the Yucatan before everything went south. The Yucatan Chichen grows like pine trees do in North America. It's hmm. absolutely everywhere. Um, I was in basically, uh, I, I forget what it was called, but it was basically like a, a theme park in Mexico, somewhere in the Yucatan um, around Cancun. And uh, the changing room stall doors in the bathrooms had Chichen doors. Hmm. And I'm sitting there like, wait a minute this stuff back home is like 20 plus dollars a board foot i'm like i at this point i was literally looking around for like a tool to like pry the door off the off the stall and take it home with me because i was just like what what like they're not gonna miss it they're using it for their bathroom stalls like what the hell they'll be like so, wow is the lumber shortage that bad yeah yeah oh, ooh, this guy's whoa. taking our bathroom door Jeez. yeah yeah the the story about chen is that the sap from it is poisonous oh good and yeah and they they would they would tell the story of this these two brothers who basically like fought each other over a girl mm. and and ended up killing each other and so the gods they the the brothers i guess like repented or something and the gods made them into trees or some story like that and the brother who is the angrier brother became the chichen tree and the other brother became, I think it's Red red Limba, also known as the Chacha tree. Mm. And so Chichen and Chacha have a symbiotic relationship where the sap from one tree undoes the damage or undoes the rash of the Chichen tree. So the Chacha undoes Chichen poisoning is, is what happens. Um, Na and nature like, is weird. <laughs> yeah. So okay. I'm like, what, what's going on with this story? Is there anything to it? And like yeah. the, the tour, cause I asked the tour guide who is, who's saying like, okay, so you told us not to touch the Chichen tree, mm -hmm. but why didn't you tell them about the Chicha tree? And she, she looks at me and she goes, how the, how the F do you know about the Chicha tree or the, the Limba tree? And I go, cause I'm a woodworker. And she goes, that, that makes sense. That tracks. Okay. And, and she's like, the reason I didn't tell them about the Chicha tree was because you really want people ripping bark off these trees after they've touched Chichen trees trying to get the, get the rash off. Like, do you really want them ruining the natural resource? Because oh. they decided to do it? So, so the, I'm just telling them to not touch the Chichen tree yeah. and, and keeping the information that the other tree is, is a healing sap yeah. because I don't want them, you know, <laughs> ripping the, the tree bark off. Trying wow. To, you know, yeah. <laughs> So, na so nature is just yeah. freaking bizarre. Like that's amazing that there are two trees and one of them sap undoes the poison that the other one does. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I'd, I'd never heard of that. Now, now you want to know the reason? Cause the, the, the whole mythological story is, you well, know, sure. it's, it's a great story. It helps, right. it helps you remember. Yeah. There's, there was a bird that, that just so happens to eat the fruit from both trees. And that's the explanation, but huh. the story is really cool. No, the story is neat. Oh. Yeah. 
Okay. And just the, and like I, like I said, the fact alone that you could that, that that one tree undoes the other tree that's just that's crazy. And and yeah. it's very fortunate they're found next to each other. That's that's ridiculous. Yeah. We're kind of doing a uh, a reverse show tonight. So if you guys have any questions that are specifically wood related, uh, you please uh, feel free to use the link I just dropped in the chat there and uh, and uh, ask away. Uh, but yeah, anything wood related or any other questions in general that you have, uh, unless you want us to look at a rash, because no, yeah. just, unless it's from a Chichen tree. If it is Chichen related, then fine. I had another question for you. Oh yeah, yes, linseed oil. The hell does that do? Like and and why? So linseed oil. Linseed oil uh, is obviously the oil of a seed. And what happens from my understanding of it, because I, I work more with pre-catalyzed lacquers than I do uh, natural oils. Okay. But lin- linseed oil, from my understanding, is a boiled, reduced oil from a seed, mm-hmm. more or less. And what is happening is a lot of resins and epoxies that you see out there are actually natural derivatives from different trees from different saps if you spray like a mat or an art spray okay um onto onto something so like i was using a binding agent when i was doing epoxy resin work a while ago um it smells like pine trees and you go oh hey what the hell's going on here so it's a natural derivative of a wood like byproduct kind of thing Hmm. um and now what ends up happening is it hardens because it's it's oxidizing. So linseed oil soaks into the wood, oxidizes, creates more or less molecular bonds, and hardens the wood. Hmm. Uh, and, and more or less just provides support to the structure. It makes it because wood is carbon based and there's a whole bunch of chemistry going on there with oxidization and carbon and all this other stuff hmm. and hardens the wood so that's that's more or less it um shellac is i want to say ground bugs for those of you that have ever um that's why it's shell lac it's a shell get out of here are you serious yeah so shellac is is exoskeletons from bugs i'm pretty certain no yeah I mean, I, 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 I guess I'll believe it. Uh, shellac is a resin secreted by a female lac bug on the trees and forests of India and Thailand. It's processed and sold as dry off flakes and dissolved in alcohol to make liquid shellac, which is, yep. Yep. A specific bug. Not not just, they don't, like, just take cockroaches and throw them in the blender. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah, like like Gorgie's just said, note to self, grind bugs and ants into my desk to increase quality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. I mean, a lot of, so... A lot of modern woodworking finishes that you can either find, see, or whatever else, they're all recreations of what we find in nature. Huh. And they're all recreations of the process of petrifying or or letting wood cure naturally. Mm-hmm. So like epoxy resin when the when the river resin tables were big, again, they're derived from pine sap. They're they're just a chemical way. It was like it, what, one of the plots of the Transformers movie where they found a way to artificially create a transformer and they made uh, Gigatron or whatever the the super body for Megatron and then put his consciousness in it or whatever the hell. Mm. It, it's just we're we're finding ways to imitate the processes that nature does to things so someone someone spilled something onto a log by accident found out hey this log all of a sudden is harder what happened and then we found out the chemical way to do it and there we go so Hmm. that's that's all it is so um nitro nitro cellulose lacquer you break it down nitro so Mm -hmm. it's a nitrogen based cellulose sugar and or cellular adhesive kind of deal like uh, doing things at the cellular level nitrocellulose the etymology and then it okay so it's a nitrogen based wood finish is that's all it is wow so. this is this, this just crazy so so uh, why do you think it is and i guess the reason i keep going back to linseed oil is because um yeah. 
in like in your basic like old school like uh, you know when you're doing when you're working on a project or something like that and you you want it to be finished but you really don't care what it looks like or whatever linseed yeah. oil is usually the 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 go-to that i see recommended and, and and i always wondered that like why did that particularly take off rather than a stain or something like that was it just a matter of they had linseed oil laying around or like it probably honestly it probably was because from what so i'm also doing like a little searches and whatever in the background just to fact check myself and make sure i'm on the right track mm -hmm. it's flax seeds is okay. seed oil is, is flax so you think about the avail the wide availability someone figuring out that the oil from this can then be used to finish oh. uh, there's danish oil is another is another version of that and i'm pretty yeah. sure that's linseed oil cut with shellac something something along those lines or hmm. uh boiled and then shellac dissolved in it it's just a different mix of linseed oil huh. is what's going on there um it's just probably because wide availability and it was a simple easy finish also from what i understand of it it dries relatively quickly gorgeous gone wild says pour a beer out in respect for the guy who ground bugs into his furniture for the betterment of mankind <laughs> No, that's the weirdest origin story I think I've ever heard. That's ridiculous. That was honestly probably someone, if it's Thailand and India, it was probably someone in, in China who found shellac first. Um, Korea, China, Japan all have very big history with lacquered furniture. Mm -hmm. And so it probably, being that's an India-Thailand bug, probably came out of someone grabbing something for medicinal purposes and this is conjecture at this point, and then putting it in a pot or mortar and pestle, grinding it up and leaving the pot on too long and saying, Hey, this, this makes some weird or leaving it in the, in their wooden container for so long and then opening up and it's shiny. Why is it? Well, why, why is it? Why is it shiny? You know, and then kind of slowly from there figuring out because humanity mm. is just a series of mistakes that end up becoming useful inventions. Like that's, yeah, that's how we yeah. do stuff. That is that is true. Uh, one and, and you know what? One great place to make mistakes, by the way, uh, is the uh, is the sin shop. Uh, now the sin shop. This uh, this show is being done on behalf of the sin shop. Uh, we're Maker Hacker Space, located in Las Vegas, and uh, we offer you the tools and materials that you can use in order to make whatever you can think of. Uh, now we're mostly closed for construction right now, but if you'd like to come check out the shop, you can visit us at sinshop.org forward slash discord. Join our Discord, check out the shop build out channel, and you can find out uh, when the shop will be open. We do have members holding it open at, uh, for limited times on limited days. Uh, but if you'd like to find out just in general more information about the shop, you can have, head over to sinshop.org for more info on the shop. All right. And and wait, before you go, say support your local makerspace. They're very important for, their, for your community. They serve as bedrock foundations. Support the Sin Shop. Yeah. So. Yeah, do that thing. Yeah, go do those yeah. things that he just said. Do, do the thing. Do those. Do the thing. It's important. Do the thing. Do the do the thing, and then yeah. okay, do the work first, then do the thing, then do yeah. what? What should they do afterwards? More of the thing. Do more of the thing. Thank you, life's lesson. I'm gonna pretend to floss. No, <laughs> more of the thing. Just keep doing the thing over and over. Okay. All right. Good deal. Thank you. Thank you, life's lesson. Yeah. You you've saved us again. So butcher blocks. What is it that yeah. makes? What is it that makes butcher block wood so special? And, 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 and corollary to that, what keeps it from sucking up all the nastiness? This is really cool because butcher block is one of my favorites to talk about and one of my favorite materials to uh, work with when I can work with it. Um, um, butcher block, the reason they call it that is when you... This is also... Wait a minute, I have to grab a thing. Pong, keep them busy. Dead gum kids. I tell you, you just get, you just get rolling... And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, I gotta go. I work with Butcher Block a lot. I, I make cutting boards. That's one of my things. You gave okay. me an opportunity, Pong. That's what so. I do here. Anyways, um, so I make these fantastic little bar boards. I sell them. That's what my trading company is all about. I sell my woodworking alongside everyone else's. Shameless plug. All right, so Butcher Block, the special thing about Butcher Block, normally and traditionally, it's end grain, which, oh, so, uh, apparently I scared the cats upstairs when I screamed about woodchucks. Um, and I'm not to do that. Uh, so either way, we have a message from central command. Do not scream about woodchucks anymore. Do not scream about woodchucks and slam the basement doors. Um, 
Anyways, so end grain. End grain is the end of the straws that wood is made out of. All, all the right. little dots and rings that you see here. I see that. Now, butcher block got its name from being a block of end grain that butchers would use on their knives. And the reason being is that that grouping of straws, when you bring your knife down on it, would split and then self-heal. Oh, what? And because you were basically cutting into, you were splitting, and then after you split that and drew the knife up, it would more or less shut back. It, it was the earliest self-healing mat. Huh. And, and so butchers preferred butcher block for that reason. They maintained it by using mineral oil. And okay. the reason they would do that is because A, mineral oil is hydrophobic. And the second part of that is that the wood would absorb so much of that, that base oil that it would push out any of the water. Hmm. And so butcher block would, while, while there's a lot of blood when you're doing butchery, there, it would keep out a lot of, of it. Not mm -hmm. necessarily all of it. You'll see some that's stained. If you see those, yeah. you'll, there's these big big huge like foot tall ones because they're driving mm. their cleaver on that thing so you have you have butcher blocks that are literally like they're not just inches thick they're feet thick yeah yeah um, i've seen them that are actually kind of concave like they've been there for a while and they they're like they've been, they've been cutting some meat <laughs> yeah um so so either way that's that's that but then you have um there's Butcher block has now become synonymous with this style as well. It's like a bowling alley style glue up. This still does the whole kind of self healing thing, mm. just not to the extent that an all end grain board would. And a all end grain board is actually much, much harder to work. So you oftentimes see long grain glue ups like this uh, on, on cutting boards. Okay, so I have a question for you then. Why would yep. one, if one, if one wanted to make a cutting board, why wouldn't yeah. one take the wood, stand it up, like you know, cut a bunch of blocks, stand it straight yeah. up, and then glue all that together, right? So that you do have the end sticking up. A lot of people do that, oh. but it becomes incredibly difficult. Like they do this, they do the end grain mm -hmm. like this. But end grain is a lot denser. If you try to sand or get dense and and mark saw marks out of end grain, you will be there forever. Mm. And if you put it through a planer, because again, that grouping of straws, what happens is those straws end up tearing away from each other and mm. chipping away from the board. Yeah. So it's very difficult to tool properly and it's very time intensive. So if you wander into Ikea and you go to their butcher block countertop section or you go to discount flooring or the one with the yellow whatever the the stamp or or any of those places and they're selling you either bowling alley or butcher block or whatever else mm. it's not going to be end grain surely because of the cost to manufacture that cleanly mm. if someone is doing butcher block work and they're doing end grain it's taking a lot of time and labor to make that and why would they do it when they can still technically sell butcher block or maple laminate um, or however you want to call it? Um, and laminate doesn't mean like a thin layer. It can just mean multiple boards la glued, laminated yeah. together. I mean, like, like a skateboard deck. Yes. Skateboard. Yeah. 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 Um, so either way, like when when you can do this in less time and still end up with a, a quality product, you take the option that costs you less money and that costs you less time and manufacturing risk and all this other stuff. Yeah. Cause you can have things tear out cracks, all this other stuff. So, wow. Cause you, so, yeah. So is that something like, you know, if I were a, uh, if I were a chef, if I'm the mayor of flavor town, I don't remember the, that dude. Guy, anyway, Fieri. Guy Fieri. If I'm Guy Fieri, right. And I've got all this, yep. all this money and I love cooking. Is that a thing where you could buy a really fancy one that is end up like that? Oh, and that's, yep. that's real money, huh? That is a completely end grain butcher block cutting board. I, 
I personally would have to say, depending on size and, and even just like working time, like I don't think I'd touch anything with end grain for like less than 75 and 75 is getting you like a small board Mm -hmm. because you end up having to do all those cuts, all those glue ups and you have to make sure they're incredibly sturdy, like, like incredibly well done kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And like three quarters of that board is, is glue Mm. or is, or three quarters of your time is, is, and then cleaning up that glue. Yeah, And then doing like, there's a lot of different steps there and then figuring out your machine cuts to make sure that your tear out is minimal and, and whatever else. So it, it is money, but only because of the difficulty, like some woodworkers who have been doing things for years. If, if end grain cutting boards is not a necessarily a big challenge for you, you're talking a woodworker of five years, like two to five years hmm. who is, that's all they do. Is, wow. is end grain stuff and then they can demand a premium because they have the experience so end grain gets is is nice don't get me wrong it is terrifically nice mm-hmm. but you are going to get pricey just because the way the material is cut it's a very wasteful way to do things and it's not bad i'm painting it in a very negative light but it's not bad in fact it's it's the highest quality i'm just pulling back the curtain on the process for everybody like end grain boards take a lot of work sure well that's that's probably why they cost more money yeah and don't don't let anyone who sits there and says like there there might be other woodworkers out there watching right now who's like oh end grain boards aren't that much well they're not that much work to you yeah, right, right. Yeah. I'm I'm looking at it as a perspective of yeah, it's it is a decent amount of work, but from the layman's perspective is where I'm looking at it from. Mm-hmm. Like it's not a lot of work to me. It's not a lot of work to an experienced woodworker, but from layman's terms and from from market from the view of market forces, it's a lot of work. Don't un, don't sell yourself short there. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so I've got uh, so we got a couple of questions in the chat. Does bamboo count as being woodworking to you? Yes, bamboo is a type of wood, though it is it, it is technically a grass, but because it is um, because it is a material that works very similarly to wood, and you can do it with woodworking tools. I I do consider wood it woodworking. Um, it's normally more survivalist skill to to work with bamboo, but there are industrial um, you can order it like bamboo blanks, planks, and more or less press boards from industrial supply companies that that an actual woodworking company would use. So yes, bamboo can be can be used for for woodworking or used in a wood shop. And uh, so. and it, it appears as though life lesson is is stunned, is shocked, and chagrined that uh, that it is in fact a grass. Yeah. Yeah, bamboo, um, bamboo, and there there are different types of trees that we think of as trees that are either grass or large plants that do yield workable wood. What what, what humans would consider wood, kind of thing. I say that as what, if I'm a robot or an alien. What, what you humans, humans would consider yeah. wood. I yes, mean, us I, humans, us humans, of course. Yes. <laughs> I joke that I'm more sawdust than man at this point. I'm just a wood golem kind of construct. So, so what are um, some what are some other grasses that we mistake as wood? This is this is a new concept to me. So, not necessarily a grass, but something very that grows or has a growth pattern very similar to bamboo is palm. And I think palm trees are only called trees because they tower over us. I, I think they're technically some sort of other genius genus. What? Or whatever, family, whatever else. They're, they're, palm trees. I have one in my backyard. Actually, yeah. I mean, they're trees, but they're, they're more, they're not necessarily a grass, but the way that they grow is very similar to the growth of bamboo. If you look at, if you look at bamboo grain and you look at palm grain, Mm-hmm. They're in the. They're very in the same family, and what I mean by that is palm is a omnidirectional grain, and only or a a um so it only goes one. Oh, that it would be. Go, it only grows. Sorry, that'd be uni. That uni. Sorry, uni direct. Yes. No. Oh, okay. Um, the reason I know this is I just got. We were at a mill the other day, 
to get some coffee tree for for dogmite and i went up to the turning blank bin and i bought a blank of black palm for the uh dice makers to use that's black palm okay all right that's that's what the grain of a black palm tree looks like now if you look at bamboo now that's turned horizontally yeah but look at the the similarity between that's bamboo Mm -hmm. and we go we go back over to the black palm i should just open a new tab and just (laughs) flitted back between the two back and forth yeah i can see the similarity yeah it just goes in one direction right yeah and (laughs) and because palm trees are more or less like pretty much straight there are some that you know obviously they do the whole tropic thing where they curve over a cove but it's still it's not the twisting and and turning of all these different branches and trunks and whatever else it's yeah. just a unif one uniform trunk yeah they, they pretty so, much curve over because they're they're heavy basically uh and yeah. also you should while we're here you should show uh life's lesson the uh, uh what was it that, that we were looking at before leopard the leopard wood Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah, if you if you if you like the black palm, get a load of this. This is some neat stuff. Yeah, this is this is leopard wood. Yeah, and it just looks like that. Like that's just how it comes. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow, that is neat looking. Look at that. So so that's an effect called book matching. Yeah. And book matching is when you take a singular board and cut it down the thickness of the board and open it like a book and what ends up happening is the grain mirrors one another Mm -hmm. so that's what you would call a a book match set yeah is when you do an effect like that Mm. Uh, and that happens a lot you see that a lot with violins a lot with violins a lot with guitars Mm -hmm. a lot with you know um a lot with maple so so when you do that then basically the only thing holding one side of the wood to the other is glue is that yes is that strong? Like, I mean, you're you're edge gluing. So you're edge gluing. Oh, sorry. That's the yes. So that is when a glue joint is done properly. The actual glue dries stronger than, and the joint is stronger than the surrounding wood. Hmm. So the wood will always give before the glue joint does. Hmm. Is one of the, one of the things to remember there. Um, so it is it is decently strong. When you see something butch ma- uh, book matched like that, it's normally also backed by something else. So the gotcha. glue joint itself is strong for the two pieces, but the the method in which it's employed also ends up in like being really strong as well. You can't, mm-hmm. or ends up being supplemented by something else. So on the back so, side of that piece there that that, that you have at the lower uh, lower right you would have like something on the back of that like e- even just a laminate i would imagine would add some form of strength to that right is that yeah, kind of yes yeah um let me see if i can find an edge shot because you see it a lot on les pauls all right so like here's you can see the mirror line along along this right here like right where oh, but where it's not mirrored though right well so this is this is also what's called a poor man's book match Okay. Where you just okay. take two pieces of, of fairly uniform grain maple and you glue them edge to edge. This ah. that is a a roughly true book match. There are a, there's a little bit yeah. like this is probably on a higher grade custom shop maple because this is like a, a very high quality flame. And there's also you can also do it with other figured woods. Like this is not a Gibson, this is something so that is spalted maple. Mm. And you can see down here where where they mirrored it because you can see that chapel at the like right here yeah that point so that's a that's a true mirror Mm -hmm. because you're seeing the grain and now you're seeing all the figure all the spalting and spalting is a whole nother ball game entirely yeah um so but that is that is where you'll most often see it and there's a massive block of either mahogany ash alder or another like heavy dense wood behind that yeah so so yes very 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 good construction method so basically you you have sonny bono to thank for all of the uh all of the copyright kerfuffle that that uh that uh we have to go through you know for 
at least for you know characters yeah. and trademarks and, and stuff like that we have sunny to blame for no one being able to share man that was pretty good <laughs> that was pretty good no that's, it wasn't don't that, hurt no, me. no 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 <laughs> that was beautiful that's where we end the show so if you're watching us on youtube uh you just got to see a small section of this show and man let me tell you there was some crazy stuff that happened you you kind of missed it uh but check us out on twitch twitch.tv forward slash sin shop and also uh, if you're watching on youtube and you like what you see uh throw us a like if you really like what you see and you want to know when we're doing more throw us a subscribe if uh you don't like anything leave us a comment let us know why and uh and we definitely look at those and and we uh and we base future shows off of the comments so so yeah this was this was cool this is a, a little experimental yeah. thing i kind of dug it so as we as we go off for the evening here folks yeah thank you for tuning in thank you for the people who clicked over from my facebook if you want to check out what i'm about check out instagram to at tusano trading co we have a new website uh, and if you check our Facebook, it's probably up there as well, as well as an Etsy shop, things where I make uh, handmade wood goods, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. and if you want to check out the work that I do for tabletop gaming, if you're into that kind of uh, nerd stuff, check out Dogmite Games. Highly recommend them. And a lot of the pieces that are up there, uh, I've had a hand in making or my excellent team has had a hand in making. So uh, d please go check them out. And I say my team as in my coworkers. I don't I don't directly direct them. That's my awesome bosses. Um, and I do the voiceover for Unleashed, the YouTube series that they do. I am the voice of Sawdust uh, at the at the end of every episode. Um, so keep tuning into the SinShot podcast. Keep supporting your local maker space and uh, keep making wonderful things. So there you go. Well, awesome. All right. So then uh, before we say goodbye, uh, just one last time, this is all on behalf of the Sin Shop. Uh, we're a maker hacker space located in Las Vegas, Nevada with the tools and equipment uh, to let you make whatever your little heart desires. Uh, if you'd like to know more about the shop, you can go to sinshop.org. You can see that down there uh, in the little little thingy down there below. Uh, if you'd like to join our discord, you can find out when the shop is open. If you'd like to come take a tour, because uh, right now we are in the uh, the middle of, uh, of a remodel. Uh, you can go over to sinshop.org forward slash discord uh, to find out more. Just check out the shop build out channel and uh, you can find out all about it right there. Uh, and that uh, is going to bring us to the end of the show. Don't forget to check out on Monday uh, where we're going to we're going to be doing our project stream. Uh, Notes and volts. You might might want to check that out because we are going to be uh, I'm, I finally got my potentiometers in and I'm going to be actually finishing something I've been working on since episode like four. <laughs> uh, so finally be finishing that sucker uh it's a uh it's an old uh, hex inverter 909 kick that you uh apparently they they stopped producing them and i got one of the pc boards and i'm finally gonna be finishing that sucker and i cannot wait there was another thing so uh -oh. robot fighting i almost forgot about the robot fighting uh there may i don't know if i can announce it yet but there may be a live event if you're in the Vegas area, and most of you aren't, but if you are in the Vegas area, there's a robot fight, in, a regional robot fight that is coming very soon. It is going to be in public, and it's going to be cool. It's uh, it's not the heavyweights, it's not the 250 pounds, but I think they're doing, uh, I wanna say three pounders. That is gonna be coming up at the beginning of July, I believe. I'll have more information available in the uh, not too distant future, but watch this space because uh, information about that will be coming. It might, it might, it might, it might, it might be on the Friday show. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I didn't say anything. I've said nothing. Okay, so with that, I am, of course, the Mighty Pong. And I'm Thomas Susano. And have yourself a fantastic weekend, and we will see you on Monday. Take care, everybody.